Amen. God, you made a way. Amen. Do me a favor. Let everybody stand to your feet all over the building. Amen. And while we are standing, reach over and hug somebody. Just love on them. Come on, love on somebody. Love on somebody tonight. I'm so glad you made it out. I'm excited that you made it out tonight. Amen. Now help me for about 30 seconds to celebrate God for your neighbor. Amen. Come on, give me 30 seconds. Help me celebrate God for your neighbor. Oh, glory to God. Help me celebrate God for your neighbor. Amen. While our hands are together, put them together for our bishop in his absence. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I talked to him earlier today, and the bishop said he was going to try to come out. I said, no, it's all right. It's about to be real cold in about 25 to 30 minutes. And I said, there's no need for you to come out tonight. Our job, I'm not going to say my job, our job is to preserve his life. Amen. And I'm going to do the very best that I can. I hope that you guys help me out with that. Amen. Tonight, I'm not going to hold you long because I don't want you to be outside and, and, and we freezing. Amen. Would you say, bless the Lord. Amen. I'm with you. I'm glad we're there together. Amen. It's been a long week. But there is a word from God in here tonight. Amen. Temple of Praise, it is offering time. Get your tithe, get your seed, get your love in your hand all over the building. I'm expecting God to do great things. A couple of quick announcements. I know we've already been through it, but I'm going to say it again. Amen. On Christmas, Christmas, Christmas morning, we will have one service. Amen. One service on Christmas morning. So I'm going to need for you to get here early. Because if you don't get here early, you're going to have a problem. Amen. I'm so, I'm so glad I got one. That's going to holler out and say, no seat. Amen. <laughs> and then on New Year's Eve, we will have two services, 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. And then on New Year's morning... We'll come right back again and do a one service at 10 a.m. Amen. 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 I'm running around a little bit tonight. If y'all haven't seen me, I'm talking to this one and talking to that one and talking to that one. Just, just working on something tonight. Amen. Amen. I dare you to touch somebody and tell them I'm working on something. Oh, come on, y'all ain't said the way y'all was supposed to say it. I dare you to find somebody else. Because amen, because the first person you was talking to, that couldn't have been the one that was connected to your destiny. Now, I need for you to find somebody that's connected to your destiny. Amen. And, and simply mention it to them. Say, tell them I'm working on something. Amen. So glad to be able to be working on something. If you have your Bibles, if you don't mind, turn over to Jeremiah 50. Jeremiah 50, amen. Jeremiah 50, amen. And when you have it, stand to your feet as our custom to stand for the reading of the Word of God. And I'm not in the business of changing that particular custom. Amen. When you have it, say amen. Glory to God. Amen. Verse number 34. Jeremiah 50 and 34. The scripture reads, Their Redeemer... Is strong. Glory to God. Their Redeemer.
is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. We shall thoroughly plead their cause. I'm going to stop right there. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Be with us in this place, Master. Speak to me. Speak through me. Open up the ears and the hearts of the believers that are here tonight, Lord God. Allow your presence to flow freely in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please take your seats. He is my redeemer. Amen. He is my my redeemer. Um, before I go any further, I want to look at a couple different things. I, I have to, uh, you have to understand that um, the year, the glory of the Lord is coming. It's about 16 days left, if I'm not mistaken. The year of the glory of the Lord is coming. Uh, but there's still more time left in this year. Amen. And, 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 you know, before we even get into the year of the glory, we must understand that there's still time left in the year of the soldier. Um, what are you doing with your time? Amen. What are you doing with your time? Time is important. What are you doing with your time? Um, there are some things that God has promised us in this year, 2016, that has not come all the way together as of yet. There are 16 days left. What are you doing with your time? Amen. What are you doing with your time? In this particular scripture, you'll find um, this here. It says, your Redeemer is strong. Your Redeemer is strong. We first have to understand what does it mean to be a Redeemer? What does it mean to, 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 to be a, excuse me, a Redeemer? Pay attention to me. Um, what does it mean to be a Redeemer. Um, you'll find it in, in several different scriptures inside of the Bible. Uh, one of the most important ones I like to find, I looked over in the Ruth. Y'all remember the story of Ruth? Hey Amen. I love Ruth. Ruth is one of my favorites. Uh, matter of fact, turn to it quickly. Come on. Turn to it quickly. Find Ruth chapter number three. Chapter number three in the book of Ruth. Amen. Do you have it? In verse number seven, it said, After Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was cheerful, he went to lie down yeah, at the heap of grain, and she came softly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. Hmm. Redeemer. Kinsman Redeemer. Um, and in this particular scripture, you'll find out that, that the Ruth, what she was doing was she was following the directions um, that Naomi had given her. She was following the directions that Naomi had given her. Let me say it again. She was following the directions that she received from somebody who already been there and done that. Okay, amen. I want y'all to hear me. Uh, sometimes we have to pay attention to those who have already been somewhere that, amen, that we're trying to go. See, a lot of our problem, especially when it comes to church, is that we think we know it all. Okay, I'm going to walk in here tonight. Amen. It's because we think we absolutely know everything about it is to know everything. Uh, look, I, I, I found out a long time ago, the moment that I think that I know everything, it would be the stupidest day of my life. Because I don't know everything. Amen. And every day you can read the same scripture and come up with a new revelation every single day if you decide to be able to walk with Jesus the way you want to walk with Jesus because Jesus will change your revelation according to where you are in life. Amen. Ruth, what she did was she followed the directions of Naomi. When she followed the directions, uh, one of the great things she did, uh, she went down and she laid at his feet. Somebody say she laid at his feet. It was customary in those days that when you wanted to be redeemed, you wanted to be taken in because this was a young lady who did not have anything at this particular time. She was poor. Amen. She didn't have anything. The uh, only person that she was with was following the directions of Naomi. She, uh, uh, she, she was childless. She had no children at this particular time at all. She, uh, she was out there by herself with nothing. And she had to follow directions. Okay. She was out there with nothing, and she had to follow directions. Uh, okay. Let me say that one more time. She was out there with nothing, 
and she had to follow directions. Can you follow directions? Woo. Amen. This might get good tonight. Can you follow directions? Simple directions. Do you have the capacity to step outside of self and follow simple directions? Okay, let me, let me throw in a quick example out there. Um, because we have so many people that say that they're called uh, to the gospel ministry. We have so many people that say that, yes, the Lord has called me for pulpit ministry. And the Lord has called me. Uh, yeah, I have to preach. I got to preach. It's in me. It's a burning feeling that's in me to preach. But you ain't took no time out to go to nobody's school to do nothing. I'm just using this as an example. Amen. But you're called. Amen. You got the call. Call is wonderful. But you ain't studied nothing. Okay, all right. Okay, you were called to sing. You have a beautiful voice. But every song don't require B flat. Okay, did I, did I, okay, all right, all right, okay. okay. You are, I, I remember, I remember like it was yesterday. I was in West Virginia and it was a wonderful day. I, it was absolutely wonderful. The spirit of the Lord was moving heavily in that place. And, 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 and God uh, began to do something different. I had never seen him do this before. A young lady uh, was filled with his presence. And it was, you know, you know uh, my mom down at, a, down at a little, the old country spot, that little Pentecostal church down the bottom of the hill, you know, down the bottom of the hill. She, she knows exactly which one I'm talking about. Um, but, but this lady, she got filled with God's presence. It was all over her. You can see it clear as day. The Lord called me and anointed me to play the piano. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, glory to God. Anointed her, play, piano. that's what she said. All right, let, me, let me say that again. That's what she said, that the Lord had anointed her to play piano. And she got over there behind because the bishop said, go ahead, go ahead and play. If God called you to do it, go ahead and play. Uh-huh. Because she said, she said, amen, she said, Amen. At that particular time, God called her to play. She said that he anointed her to play, and she would be able to play uh, very, very good. That's what she said in the service. I was right there. I bear witness to that. And then she, then she get over there behind the piano. Mm. And um, she began to try to play. Uh, it ain't necessarily work out. Like she said, it was going to work out. But the amazing thing was, at that moment, yes, she was called to play because now she's one of the best musicians in the city. But then she had no training. Okay, I'm working. With somebody right here today she had no training at all at that particular time yes she was called yes she was anointed yes God had put something on her life yes but she had no training and she wasn't following directions clearly relative amen that was connected to her family by way of marriage uh, are y'all following me today? Um, so what she did, she went down, she laid at his feet. And after she laid at his feet, he said, you have done something great. You ain't been with nobody. You ain't. Okay. I just dropped that in there. Amen. She, hey, boy, I said, you ain't been with none of the young men that was here. And the whole lot of them been hitting on you. But ain't, you ain't been with none of them at all. Uh, you've been upright. You've been upstanding. I mean, that's what the scripture says. You, you've done a great thing. And, and, and I've been paying attention to you. So, yes, I'm going to redeem you. But there is somebody else here. Um, that has a closer relationship and, and has first rights to you. Amen. So therefore, they went through the whole process, and he spoke up for her, and he attained her, and, and amen, and took her from nothing, amen, from working in the field to owning the field. Okay. From working in the field, gleaning in the field, being found working in the field, 
Amen. Behind everybody else. Okay, she was last. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody in here today. Uh, you've been working for a long time, and you've been working really hard, and where you've been working at, and you've been, you've been considered to be last, but God said, I'm getting ready to take you from that position and put you into another position. I hope somebody can hear me talking tonight. Amen. I hope somebody can really hear me tonight. Because there, there, there is an anointing that has fell upon this place. It's called a suddenly anointing. Amen. And, and, and as soon as the prophet begins to speak, as soon as Bishop begins to speak, as soon as any of the pastors come in here and they begin to speak and they begin to teach, that same thing begins to happen immediately. So I'm trying to tell somebody, get ready to own some stuff that you've been working in. Oh, glory to God. I'm trying to help you today. Amen. Amen. So, so, so now you have, yeah, she, she followed the direction. She did everything she was supposed to do. But then you have to look at it like this. Boaz is a picture of Jesus. Boaz is a depiction and a picture of Jesus. Jesus came down to redeem us. Amen. And with, with the shedding of his blood, he began to redeem us and begin to wash away all of the sins that we have. Amen. But we neglect to do something oftentimes. We neglect to fall at his feet. <sighs> Amen. We, we, we thank him, we praise him, we worship him, but we don't bow down. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, Y'all know we'll come in here, we're dancing, we're shouting, we're hollering, we're screaming, we'll do that all day long, you know, because we are the temple of praise. We know one thing we know how to do, that is praise Almighty God. But how often do you take the time out in your personal time to bow your face down and fall at his feet. Okay, uh, grab your Bibles if you have it. This is his Bible study. Sorry to give you more than one scripture. Amen. Go to Mark 5 and 22. Mark 5 and 22. You have to understand that as your redeemer, not only is Jesus willing, but he also has the power to restore to you all that you have lost. Okay, y'all missed all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not only is he able to redeem you, put you back in the place where you, where you once were, everything that you lost in the process, he has the power to restore you everything that you lost in the process. Because the process can get kind of tough sometimes. Anybody ever been through the process, been going through a process? And sometimes going from transition from one place to another place, uh, we're going from one glory into another glory. You might just lose something in the transition. But God has the power and the authority, amen, uh, to take you from this place to that place. And not only will he bring you back to a place of your wealthy place, but everything you lost in that transition, he can restore back to you. Okay, all right. Can, 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 can I make this a little bit more simpler? Real simple. We're going to go to Mark 22 in a second. Um, uh, uh, when, when I was working on Capitol Hill, um, what we did was it was several years that we did not receive our annual raise. You know, government was going through changes. They was going through situations. And, and we did not receive our annual raise. But something happened. Administration changed. And when the administration came, changed, they said, not only are you going to receive your raise, but you're going to receive the raises that you missed from this point all the way up to this point. <sighs> okay. So everything that I lost, I got back, and then some. Okay, can I show y'all how this works? Just how this works. So if I'm making $10,000, okay, let me just throw this out there. If I'm making $10,000 and, and, and I get a 2% raise, and I'm supposed to get an annual 2% raise. Now, um, I get 2% this year, and then 2% the following year, and then 2% the following year, and then another 2% on this year. We missed all five of those. Amen. So what they're going to do is this. Now they're going to come back and give me my raise on the end. Glory to God. Uh, but they're not giving me a raise on my current situation. They're giving me the raise as if I had received each 2% each year. It went along, so not when I get 2%, I will get, what, the whole 10% on top of the... He will restore everything 
that you lost in your transition. Amen. Because there's a lot of us that's in here that's going through different transitions, but we are losing stuff in our transition. Okay, can, can I just explain this to you? Let me, let me break this down. Listen, because a lot of us have been going through transition, especially in this year, this shifting year, this year of change. Amen. Uh, this year of the soldier, we've lost a whole lot inside of this year of the soldier, uh, but we're still standing. Amen. That was a shouting point, and a lot of y'all just missed all of that. Listen, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. even though we lost a whole lot, we're still standing. Even though we went through a whole lot of changes, I'm still here. Even though we went through ups and downs and trials and tribulations, throughout all the stuff that we've been through, all the hell and the hot water, that all the challenges that came up inside of this year, we are still here and 16 days away from a transition. 16 days away from a trans, and still here, I'm still standing. Good. Do, do me a favor. Reach over and talk to somebody real quick. Tell them I'm still here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Reach over to find somebody else. Tell somebody else, I'm still, I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm, I'm still here. Amen. I, I shouldn't be here right now, but yet I'm still here. They tried to run me away, but guess what? I'm still here. They tried to kick me out, push me out, throw me out, but yet I'm still here and I'm still standing. Amen. Amen. I'm still here and I'm still, I'm still standing. Do you have your Bibles? Turn over to Mark 5 and 22. Amen. Mark 5 and 22. He read about it. No weapon. Glory to God. That was formed because they were formed had the ability to be able to prosper against me. Why? Because I am his child. Mm. Yeah, amen. Do you, have your, you, do you have Mark 5 and 22? And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jarius by name. Amen. Jarius by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, begged him earnestly, saying, My daughter lies at the point of death, come lay your hands on her mm -hmm. that she may be healed uh -huh, and she will live. Okay. It's very important. Jerry has recognized who God was, recognized who Jesus was, and came and fell at his feet. Came and fell at his feet. And he began to ask and beckon and plead with him to come and lay hands on his daughter. He didn't come for himself. Hmm. He came for his daughter. Now, I really want you to look at this because um, Jarius is one who did not have to bow. Amen. J Jarius was one that people bowed to him. When they came into the synagogue, what would they do when they came into the synagogue? They would bow down to Jarius because of Jarius' position. Amen. They would bow down to Jarius because of Jarius' position. He was one of the what? schooling. You had to go through a whole lot of backgrounds. You had to go through a whole lot of things to, to, to attain this particular position. Uh, your bloodline had to be a certain way. You had to be able to act a certain way. You had to be able to talk a certain way to be able to, to, to attain the position of a synagogue leader. So now Jarius came and despite his position, despite who he was, he threw all of that out the window and bowed down to Jesus. Okay. All right. I want, I want y'all to see this. Um, he had a title, but he still bowed. Yeah, yeah. He had a title, but Jerry is still bowed down. You must understand the higher you go up, the lower you must be. Okay, all right. You have to be humble in this thing for this thing to work for you. Amen. Uh, ain't nothing like a, a proud, uh, well, I almost said something else. Um, Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing like a big head, proud, such a much, that got a title, but no power. You can often tell, yeah, yeah, amen. You, you can often tell when someone is not 
uh, in the face of God because they got a title and got no power. They got a title and no authority. They got a title and nothing that, that, that validates who they are other than the symbols that they got behind their name. Or matter of fact, the title that's before their name that really they didn't earn, they just got. This man with a title fell down, not because, not because uh -huh, of himself. He fell down because of his daughter. Now, I wish I had time because I talked about the other young lady who fell down at his feet and grabbed, a, you know, grabbed, 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 grabbed a, uh, down, at, down the corner of his cloth, his, his uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the hem of his garment. I would talk about her for a minute, but, but sometimes I get caught because she is one of my favorites because, you know, I talked about one time a message, don't, uh, don't count me out, even though I'm coming from behind, don't count me out. Yeah, yeah. E even though I'm breaking protocol, still don't count me out. Even though I'm going through changes, please don't count me out. I know you didn't consider me at all, but guess what? Please don't count me out. I know I done spent every dollar that I had, but please don't count me out. I might be coming from behind, but please don't count me out. My Savior is over there. And if, if I can just get to him, I, I get everything that I need. Don't count me out just because I'm coming from behind. Amen. But, there, but there's another story in the Bible. There's another young lady. And I'm going to hurry up. I'm going to get out of your way. Amen. Turn over to Mark 7 and 25. Mark 7 and 25. Amen. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard about him. Hmm. Okay. Let me put a pen right there. She heard about him. She heard about Jesus. She heard about the wonderful things that Jesus could do. She heard about the miracles that he had already performed. She heard that he was the one that she needed to talk to. She heard. Now, what is it that you have heard? Mm. I, I had a conversation yesterday, and um, I, I was talking, and, and, and they said, uh, uh, Pastor, at one point, I didn't believe nothing you said. I said, really? I said, that kind of hurt my feelings. I'm a pastor and everything, and you ain't believe nothing I said? Wow, that's a bad place to be in. But then she went on to say, it wasn't because of what I personally heard from you. It was because of what I heard about you. It, it wasn't, yeah, yeah amen, because it wasn't nothing that you showed me. No, 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 it wasn't none of that at all, because cause you showed me all kind of wonderful and great things. You, you, you showed me this, and you showed me that, and you showed me that. But it was all based upon what I had heard from someone else. Hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing how you can allow someone that's close to you that can mess up your flow. What do I mean by mess up your flow? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if, if God is using me, I'm just using me as an example right now. If God is using me to speak life into you, you can mess up the flow that God has given me to, so that you won't even be able to receive what I'm giving you because you don't believe based off what somebody else said. Am I, am I talking? Am I talking? I'm talking? Okay. Just make sure I'm in the right house. Because, uh, Lord, God, if I had time, I'd say something else. Um, unclean spirit heard about him. She heard about him. She didn't have any proof. She heard. Mm -hmm. And she came and she fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek. She wasn't even supposed to be there. A Syrophoenician by birth. She kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. She continued to ask him to cast this demon out 
of her daughter. Now, now I will tell you this, that in both situations, that, that uh, both of their daughters were, were, were healed. Both of their daughters were delivered. Both of the daughters were set free. But it wasn't because something that the daughters did. The daughters had nothing to do with their own deliverance. <clears throat> okay. The daughters had nothing to do at all with their own deliverance. They just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One daughter was there and the other daughter was all the way over there and, and, and one came and fell at his feet in front of everybody and the other one came and fell at his feet when there really wasn't too many folks with some deacons and stuff. And she didn't care either, um, but she called him and she fell at his feet. Amen. Sometimes you got to be persistent and push past the people that's trying to block you. You have to push past the folk that's trying to block you, trying to stop you from receiving what God has for you. Amen. Even if you got to push past yourself. Uh, let me say that again. Sometimes you got to push past yourself. Amen. Because you can mess up everything that God has for you. Hey, glory to God. You can get in the way of everything that God is trying to do for you. Sometimes you got to push past yourself to get yourself into God's presence. And once you get there, then he will begin to command a blessing upon your life. After you get there. Amen. So, so now these young ladies, they didn't have anything to do with, with their own deliverance, with their own healing. Um, but those that were connected to them, their, their parents had the ability to change the direction of their destiny. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so what you're trying to tell me, if, if, if my parents decided, and they did, and decided to pray hard enough, uh -huh. if my parents decided to, 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 to lay before the Lord long enough, they, they decided to get into the presence of God. Yes, they did. And, and when they decided to get into the presence of God, because I was going down the wrong path, it began to change and begin to shift. Uh, amen. I wonder if you've ever heard this, and I believe that you have. Somebody prayed for me. Yeah, yeah, amen. Had me on. Their, they took the time, and they what? And they prayed for me. I'm so glad I had somebody that decided to pray. Glory to God. Pray for me, amen. Because if they never would have prayed for me, I would have never had an encounter with the master. And if I would have never had an encounter with God, what would have happened was... I would have went down the wrong street at the wrong time. Amen. Um, I'm so glad my grandma prayed, mm -hmm. prayed for me. I'm so glad that my father decided to pray for me. I'm so glad that my mother decided to pray for me. I, I, I have to do something because I feel it in my spirit. If you don't mind, just for a few moments, I need for you to open up your mouth and begin to pray. Because there are some children of ours that's getting ready to go down the wrong path. But we have the ability to shift and change the way, yeah, glory to God, the assignment that the enemy have on their life, we can shift that thing. If we just take a moment and open up our mouths and pray, we can change course of action. Oh, come on, pray, pray. You might not have children, but you know somebody that need God. You know somebody. Oh, come on, pray. Open up your mouth and pray. Father, I thank you for moving, protecting, 
my children. God, I thank you for not allowing the enemy to have his way. God, I thank you for backing the enemy up. Lord God, I thank you for showing your grace and your mercy. God, I thank you for allowing your power to cover. God, I thank you for allowing your peace to be with them. God, I thank you for allowing your joy to rest all upon them. God, I thank you for changing their direction. God, I thank you. In Jesus' name, the path that they might have gone on, God, you blocked it, I thank you. The friend that they should have stayed away from, God, I thank you. The places that they found themselves in and you protected them, God, I thank you. The wrong things and you turned it around. In Jesus' name, amen. This is amazing to me because uh, the scripture says that he will plead your case. And in pleading your case, it means that he will, uh, causing only blessings of wisdom, deliverance, restoration, prosperity, liberty uh, to come into your situation. If you really truly believe that God is able to do this thing for you and you put trust in him, then, uh, yeah, amen. Once you make him your redeemer, because you can be your redeemer until you accept him, you got to make him your redeemer, amen. As soon as you make him your redeemer, redeemer, he will come into your situation and cause your situation to change. Cause your situation to change. And I'm done for tonight, but listen, if... We're transitioning from the year of the soldier into year of God's glory. You have to understand that the glory just don't come with just his presence. <sighs> okay. All right. Um, if, if, if I was a hooping, hollering preacher, this would be my time uh, to tap into, you know, as they would say, a storefront anointing. And, and, and begin to hum a little bit and begin to sing a song while I'm, while I'm giving. Um, yeah, amen. Thank you, Derek. I appreciate it. Give you, uh, as they say, my closing at this particular time. Because wherever God's presence is, there is liberty. Wherever God's presence is, there is peace. Wherever God's presence is, there is joy. Wherever God's presence is, there is deliverance. Wherever God's presence is, there is salvation. Wherever God's presence is, there is prosperity. What do you mean by prosperity, preacher? This is what I mean. It's very simple. That everything, glory to God, that God has for me, has stored up for me, he will not withhold that from me because now we are walking in a place of his presence. And if we're walking into his presence, anything that he has for me, he has no other choice but say, you know what, son? You've been a good one. You, you've done what I've asked you. you followed directions. Now I have to pour out the blessings because I'm in your presence. And you have to understand, when you're in God's presence, there is no sickness. Uh, okay. Amen. B -b because the, the sickness cannot dwell in the same place where God is. Okay. All right. Um, last week, we talked about the gatherings. We talked about how when Jesus came across and, and he was able to uh, see this young man that was there. And, and because uh, this man had demons inside of him, they even said, Jesus said, well, what is your name? He said, Legion, Legion, meaning many. Um, he did not have just one demon. He had a legion of demons, meaning that he had an army of demons that rest inside of him. Amen. Because the legion is re in, in perfect reference to, uh, to armies and, and, and having squadrons of people. They will call them a legion. So he had a legion of demons that was in him, but in his presence, he had to bow down. Whenever we're in God's presence, sickness, disease, demonic impression, depression, oppression <laughs> cannot stay in the same place where the presence is. Okay, all right. Uh, that's why it's so very essential 
to always praise God in the middle of your go-through. Okay. Why is this so important? The reason it's so important to praise God in the middle of your go-through, because if you praise God, you begin to usher in his presence. And when you usher in his presence, amen, nothing that's in that go-through can stop you and hold you. Yes, you're going through, but guess what? I'm going through with God's presence. I'm going through, uh, yeah, amen, with joy on my heart. I'm going through with peace on my mind. I'm going through, but I'm in God's presence, so it's making my go-through a whole lot better. But if I praise him the right way, God will step in and change my go-through and make me an overcomer over top of everything that I've been going through because I praise him the right way. Because I praise him. Stand your feet all over the building. I'm done tonight. Amen. Amen. If you got anything at all out of this, come on, somebody put your hands together and bless God. If you got anything at all, amen. If you got something out of this. These two ladies, excuse me, three ladies, Ruth, she went down and she laid at Boaz's feet, which was a picture of Jesus as our kinsman redeemer. And he paid the greatest price by giving up his life on Calvary to make him our redeemer if we accept him. He had these two other ladies that came and fell at his feet. And when they fell at his feet, it wasn't for their deliverance. It was for the children's deliverance. They had the responsibility of changing the next generation. I challenge each and every one of you in here today. Change the next generation. The only way that you can change the next generation, yes, being a great mentor is wonderful. Amen. I can't wait till we call for a prayer fast. Not just getting away from food, but really praying every day, all day, 24 hours a day to change some things in this next generation. I can't wait when some of us in here, some of us, I ain't going to say everybody, but some of us in here get serious. Amen. We get serious about where we're headed. We get serious about what God is getting ready to do. Amen. Because once we get serious, the things that we can push through together, the power that we would have together, it's, it's time out for individual accolades. So many people nowadays, all they want is accolades for the stuff that they're done, that they've done. They want somebody to stand up and pat them on the back for the stuff that they've done. And, and that's fine. And that's fine. I, I remember the time when we had to do that so that people would stay in church. Amen. You got a whole lot of folk that would leave church because somebody ain't stand up and give them an award and tell them thank you in front of everybody um, but I'm so glad we're kind of getting past that Amen. we're getting past that but this is my this is my challenge is that when we do things are we doing them for God or are we really doing this for self one of one of the greatest leaders of this ministry you would never really even know who they were they don't hold a title amen they, they never went to a deaconess class never went to a ministerial class never did any of those things at all um, 
but they decided and I'm not even going to throw their name out there because they'd be mad at me for the next six months if I did um, but what they did was they saw a need and just started doing the work they, 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 they saw a need and just started doing the work never asked the church for a dime Never said, I don't need no help doing this. I don't need no help doing that. No, no, no. They just started doing the work. With the little bit that they had, they started doing the work. It started off that they were blessing one. And then it transitioned to two. And then it went to three. And then it went to 12. And then it went to 24. The last time I checked in, she was able to be a blessing to over 200 people at one time. I call her a great leader because she stepped up to the plate and just started doing the work. Didn't need a title to do it. Jerry has put his title to the side and fell down at the feet of Jesus for the sake of his child. I have people ask me this question all the time. What should I call you? What should I call? Should I call you pastor? Should I call you elder? Should I, I said, well, you, you don't got to call me none of that. My mama named me Lamar. Now, and if I earned the fact, if I earned my title, then call me what you think I earned. I know there's a whole lot of folk that I just messed up right there with that one. It's just fine. I'm, I'm cool with that. If, if I earned it, then call me that, which, which I earned. But if I ain't earned it, just call me Lamar, because that's what my mama named me was Lamar. I'm all right with mine. Amen. I ain't going through no changes at all. Let us all stand to our feet. Amen. If you're in this place today, and I'm going to have to ask the ministers and deacons and elders, if you can, help me out quickly. Uh, and those of you that are disciples of the Temple of Praise, and that's each and every one of you in the building, I need for you to turn to someone and ask them, are you saved? Ask them, do they have a church home? If you're not saved and you don't have a church home, we ask you to consider this one. This is the temple of praise where we worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. We praise God so much, I might get on your nerves praising him. But at the end of the day, it's going to be all right anyway. Amen. Glory to God. If you're here today, you haven't been baptized, and you want to be baptized, I challenge you to meet me here today. here come on here come on here. simple of praise come on somebody give god a praise in here for these babies that are coming amen oh come on. we can do better than that amen. come on somebody else we got somebody else that's coming. Amen. Amen. Help me out. Do this for me quickly. If everybody saved in the building, slip your hand up. Put him down, put him down, put him down. Everybody in the room got a church home. Slip your hand up. 
I love it. You say temple of prayer? <laughs> Amen. Denzel, please take these that have come. Get some information from them. Pray with them. Amen. Come on, Temple of Praise. Let's bless God for our new family. Oh, we can do better. Let's bless God for our new family. Amen. Everybody grab somebody quickly. We're going to get out of here. Father, we thank you for the hand that I am holding, the one that's on my left and the one that's on my right. Lord God, be with them and protect them and guide them, Master. Give my neighbor strength. Give my neighbor peace. Give my neighbor prosperity. Lord God, I thank you for blessing them now and allow them to find their homes better than what they left them on this evening, Lord God. Protect them on all sides. Protect any and everything that they are connected to, their children and their family and their parents. Lord God, their brothers and sisters and cousins. Lord God, begin to protect each and every one of them. In the name of Jesus, we do now pray. Now, Master, bless our bishop, wherever he may be on tonight. Lord God, bless him now. Give him strength, Lord God. Continue to give him favor in your sight. Master, heal his body right now. In the name of Jesus, complete healing to rush all over him, Lord God. I do now thank you just for that. Speak to him in the quiet times, Master. Continue to give him instructions to give unto us. It is in Jesus' name we do now pray. Now somebody do me a favor and loose those hands and give God praise and count it done in this house on tonight. Well, come on. Somebody count it done tonight.